Spooky. Yo. Bro, what is going on with today's world, bro? Whole lot. Our first stop was P. Diddy. <laughs> now they saying there was something going on in Nickelodeon? Yeah, it's been going on for a while, too, bro. But you just finding out, though. I, I knew about five years ago. For real? Ten years ago, yeah. You had some favorite childhood stars in Nickelodeon, Absolutely. bro. Absolutely, yeah. What was your favorite show, bro? Uh, My favorite show in Nickelodeon was, um, you know, when I was young, of course it was the Rugrats. The Rugrats? Yeah, I liked the Rugrats. Then I liked the... Oh, right. Back, 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 mm -hmm. back. Y'all let us know in the comment section, man. What was your favorite Nickelodeon show, bro? Mm -hmm. Uh... This video is basically explaining what's going on. Our childhood is ruined. Yes. You feel me? I like all that, too. All right. Um, back, back, back. So, if y'all new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, Mookie. Right. Let's get into this video, family. Um, you are? Um, Marilyn. Me and Logan are right. <laughs> My name is Mavis. Take a bitch with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you grew up watching all that, The Amanda Show, and Drake and Josh, things might never be the same for you looking back after watching the new Investigation Discovery series mm, on Max mm, called mm, Quiet mm. on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, where former child stars and ex-Nick employees are sitting down to expose the network, detailing shocking and horrifying events that happen behind the scenes and even making you re- Why do I feel like it's just been a lot? These last, let's say these last five to six years, it just been a lot of exposing, bro. Yeah, because you gotta remember back then it was hard to expose them. Right. Due to the internet, you know the internet could be a blessing and a curse at the same time. Right. So due to the internet, you know, no secrets are being hidden anymore. You feel right. what I'm saying? People are speaking out. You feel what I'm saying? Even even not even just Nickelodeon child, even kid stars like that was in movies and stuff like that. Right. Like Macaulay Culkin, um, the, the guy Chris something, he used to play in the Goonies or whatever. Yeah. You know, they speaking out like these grown people who be wanting to have sex with these little kids and they be making them do things. And it's, 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 it's just a wicked, wicked world. That's how you know Hollywood is just wicked, bro. With everything, though, Mookie, why do you think, like, sex is, like, the main thing, bro? Uh, because, like, for some... For a lot of people, it's like a form of control. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And they'll have sex with a kid, uh, record a kid doing something crazy. Yeah. And hold it over their head. Like, you'll, if you don't do this, I'll expose you. This. And, and, you know, and it's hard, man. And they children, bro. Right. So they don't so really many know. pedophiles, bro. It's just Hell nasty. Yo. We thank some of the content that was put out there for children to view. I recently talked about how Dan Schneider has responded the to the ones, series, bro. but we're going to be talking about some of the biggest revelations from the series, along with how the public has responded and some other former Nick stars, which has actually gotten them in some trouble. In the past, I've talked about what's been said about the famous kids network as former child stars such as Jeanette McCurdy have come out to talk about their experience baby, on set. Well, when Jeanette it. released yeah, her memoir two years ago, in it, she included Beautiful. several shocking Shit, revelations yeah, from her years working at Nickelodeon, things that happened on set and behind the scenes between her and her mom. In the book, Jeanette detailed the exploitation she faced at the hands of someone named The Creator. The creator was Dan Schneider, mm. a former Nickelodeon executive, the one responsible for shows such as iCarly, Sam and Cat, Zoe 101, Victorious, The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, mm. All That, Kenan and Kel, and several others. He was the network's golden boy and responsible for so many careers. Mm. But he's also someone who has a ton of allegations against him, and mm. over the years, people have grown disgusted by what they've heard about him. And rewatching a lot of these shows back, the things that are written into How them have young, people bro. completely sick by him and the network. Nickelodeon announced in 2018 that they would no longer be working with Dan and there were several publications that had reported he was an actor too though wasn't he uh, he used to um jump in sometimes Sounds but yeah. he's the creator of all the uh the the, the kid shows yeah. he, okay. he's the main guy on complaints about Dan's alleged behavior YouTube is the number one site for millions of creators online but as more people flood to 
behavior, including his alleged well-documented temper issues. An internal investigation had been done with the company, and they claimed to have found that he was difficult to work with and prone to tantrums and angry emails, but says any other misconduct was not found during the investigation. Despite that being what the network claimed, for years now, his name has been thrown around with accusations of being inappropriate. In Jeanette's book, she opened up about her negative experience on set of iCarly with claims that she would be visibly uncomfortable on set, recalling a time during a kissing scene with her co-star Nathan Kress that she was being shouted at by the creator and had to reshoot the scene several times. Jeanette also wrote about being pictured in a bikini at a wardrobe fitting and having the creator encourage her to drink alcohol, despite not being of drinking age. She says her mom was present for some of the things that happened while working on set, but would brush anything negative off as just this being a part of Hollywood. Following her exit from Nickelodeon, she claims she was offered $300,000 from Nickelodeon to never speak publicly about her experience there, and she declined the offer. Hmm. Since the release of the Investigation Discovery series, people have been speculating on who might have actually taken that hush money, believing that she couldn't have been the only one to have been given an offer like that. Now, in the series, they truly discussed so much. It was very disturbing, I must warn, with tons of triggering topics, and the fact that this will make you remember these childhood shows much differently afterwards. Right. The four-part docuseries focused heavily on Dan, his career, and what he was bringing to set. Two female writers for The Amanda Show were featured in the documentary, having said that working with Dan was like being in an abusive relationship. Jeez. They claimed he didn't think women were funny. They also said that he would play adult content on his computer and make people do uncomfortable things like give him massages. Mm. Which, since the release of the Quiet On Set docuseries, Dan had... Why did he, um... You got to think, Nick, like, like, you know, when he was at work, he felt like he was God. Right. So he felt like I can do whatever I want to do. Right. And these people are going to listen to me. But he just was a director, though. Yeah, I mean, he was a, he was a creator. Right. You know, he, he created the show. But he wasn't as big as Nickelodeon, though. But I mean, Nickelodeon is... It was like heaven, but he yeah. felt like he was the god because he heaven. was like a goat, a golden yeah, boy. Yeah, he was everything went through him. You feel what I'm saying, right? And he made these people probably do ungodly things and taking pictures of these girls, 14 years. The old, people that's year. over top of Nickelodeon, though, they ain't say nothing to him. No, they ain't gonna say nothing to him. They making too much money from him, from him, because of because of him. You gotta remember, he created like six, seven shows. That's crazy, yo. Probably more. Why the, bro? Why do the sickest people end up in the highest position? No. Why yeah. do the sickest people seem like they be the most talented? All right, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. P. Oh, Diddy. Yeah. It, it. Like that talented is not questioned. Yeah. Just that character, that bro. That character, bro. Yeah. They, the deeds they do in the character. The characteristics of their heart, you know. It's crazy. The mouth speak with the heart feel, you know what I'm saying? Right. So he, he probably felt like he was God at work, you yeah. feel what I'm saying? come forward in a video he posted to his YouTube channel where he did admit to the massages. One writer, Jenny, and her lawyer filed complaints against the production company for gender discrimination, hostile Mm. work environment, and harassment. A settlement was reached, but she says her career suffered from this as a result. Mm. Speaking of The Amanda Show, several points were made about this show in the series. People found so many moments uncomfortable from these shows that Dan was behind, and this was one of them. There was a scene discussed where he is in a hot tub with a very young Amanda Bynes, which just feels so unnecessary. She was a child in a swimsuit and he's a grown man. Like, why are they in a hot tub together for a scene? It was also made known that one of the characters that she played on a sketch in the Amanda show was Penelope Taint. And writers in the docuseries claimed Dan was inspired by the word taint and he wanted to be like his little secret that that's what the word was and tons of people have just been shocked and disgusted to learn this because from their memory it was penelope tate but this is just unbelievable it just felt like in so many of these shows that though they were supposed to be for kids they wanted to have kids do these very Mm -hmm. adult like things almost to just try and see what they could get away with i do remember that when i was a kid my mom did not like me watching the amanda show or all that finding things really inappropriate whenever she would sit down and see me watching it and i always thought it was so ridiculous because i'm watching a freaking kids show you know but now as an adult watching this back i'm like oh my gosh i see you didn't want me to i gotta watch an episode just to see the hit i stopped letting my boy watch spongebob bro 
Why? Because of it, it has too many adult things in it. You For know what real? I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, now that he's a little older, I, I didn't express it to him. Yeah. They still don't watch it though. Right. But it it it, it, it was crazy, bro. Right. It was crazy when I sat down, and I'm sit as a grown man. I'm sitting down and I'm laughing. Right. Because I understand a joke. Right. But this this kid, he don't understand the joke. What's going like, on? Bro? It, 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 it's a lot. It's a lot, bro. It's a lot, a lot of hitting bro. Things. SpongeBob, bro. To watch this, like, she was very much seeing the things that everyone is seeing now, but I did see a ton of other people on TikTok talking about the fact that their parents also said the same thing about not wanting them to watch this show because they found something weird about it. Fans have heavily wondered what happened to Amanda Bynes over the years as Dan Schneider was so heavily involved in her life and her career. It seems he saw her as his ticket out of children's television, but in the end, it didn't work out for him following her and he came back to prioritizing children's programming again. And there's just so many questionable scenes that he was responsible for. Like we talked about the Amanda show, but looking back, they also showed scenes of Ariana Grande from Victorious where she's poor pouring water on herself while she's laying in a bed and it just isn't appropriate at all. There just seems to be so many adult innuendos happening in the scenes of these shows. There's also one where she's playing with this pickle shaped toy and then later on tries to gag herself while mm. telling a joke. Mm -hmm. She's also seen squeezing a potato in one of the other scenes and watching it back. The adults being interviewed for this series were shocked that this was even aired on Nickelodeon. Right. There was also discussions of how certain stars were treated over others as the all that alums Brian and Giovanni mm -hmm. discussed their experiences on set. Brian talked about how he felt racially stereotyped in the roles given to him as a rapper named Lil Fetus and a teen who sold cookies in a Girl Scout sketch that was basically a reference to drug dealing. He also said his mom had called out odd behavior on set when they were talking about a lot of the things that have since come out about predators on set. So she was noticing some weird stuff. And to get into one of the very dark topics of this series, Drake Bell was a huge part in this. And at first, a lot of people weren't interested in what he had to say, given that in 2021, he had pleaded guilty to a felony charge of attempted child endangerment and misdemeanor charge of disseminating matter harmful to juveniles related to inappropriate text he sent to a teenage girl in 2017. He was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service. But in the series, it seemed to reveal that he had suffered horrible things as a child himself while acting on Nickelodeon by his dialogue coach, Brian Peck, whom he was introduced to on set of the second season of The Amanda Show. And let me make this clear because tons of people have been asking after hearing his name, but Brian Peck has no relationship to Josh Peck. This was the first time that Drake was speaking out about the abuse that he had endured during his time in Nickelodeon. He said Brian had befriended him and would invite him to his house for acting lessons and horrific acts had occurred. And it wasn't until now that it's been revealed that Drake was the unnamed minor in the 2004 conviction of Brian Peck. Oh. It was extremely hard to listen to this part, mostly because Drake Bell's father had really noticed Brian's behavior and was very weary about Drake hanging out with him, did not want him to be left alone with him. Right. He even at one point had expressed concerns that he felt about Brian's behavior towards Drake to people at the network, but he was dismissed. They were just like, oh, that's just how he is. He's really friendly. Hell but no. Drake's dad did hey, not trust him. No. You see what I'm saying? That's, 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 as a parent, yo, you got to know to put a plug. This yeah. money ain't worth my child's psychological and mental health. Facts. You see what I'm saying? Because they, they, they messed up behind this, bro. Yeah, it's like they in their 30s and 40s, bro. Yeah. This really messed them up. And they not saying you know, I don't too. care, bro. A check is just not worth it, bro. Money and fame is just not worth it. Amanda Bond's mother is, I mean, no, I'm sorry. Jeanette McCurdy's mother was horrible, bro. Right. That, I was listening to her talk one day. This was an interview. This had to be about two, three years ago. Right. And she was like, Ma, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. And she, her mother was like, well, you know, Jeanette, we really need this. Right. It'll pass. It'll do this. It'll do that. Like, bro, what type of parent are you? Right. Like, if she's telling you she doesn't want to do this because of X, Y, and Z, you sit down and you listen to your child. You don't want to do this? Or you really feel that way? Yank the plug. Because you got to remember, Jeanette McCurdy used to play in episodes of Malcolm in the Middle, too. Right. That's how far her career goes back mm -hmm. to, like, the early, early 2000s. You know what I'm saying? And her mother 
just kept pushing, wiping under the rug, getting this money, you know, I make sure my daughter do this. She taking it all to these acting things and everything like that, but your daughter's really suffering inside. And then you're making your daughter feel bad by some of the things you're saying. It's, it's not worth it, bro. If you love your child, actually love your child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't just just love her up to a certain extent and then when the money come in that uh, overlaps your child or that comes on top no man come on man, man love your crazy. children you have your children for a reason you're supposed to love your children and protect your children and that didn't happen with a lot of these kids why you think so Drake so basically he was getting whatever was happening with him and he ain't say nothing to his father uh I doubt it yeah it's crazy he yeah. might have said something to somebody but I don't think it was his dad and rightfully so, but Brian got very close with Drake, ended up convincing him that his dad was not being a good manager, See? and Drake went on to be cared for by his mom. Drake's dad tried to warn his mom not to let Drake be alone with Brian, but that ended up being what happened in the mm. end, that he had been spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Brian, once Brian had convinced him to not really have his dad in his life anymore. In talking about what happened to him behind closed doors with Brian, he went on to say that one day he was on the phone with his mother and just exploded. He told her everything and his mom called the police and Brian was arrested. Mm. According to the Los Angeles Police Department release, officers arrested Brian on August 19, 2003. Court records show that he pleaded no contest to two charges and the court found him guilty on both. Mm. He served more than a year in jail and was made to register as an S offender. And I know we're talking about Nickelodeon here, but there are some said about children's television as a whole in general in the way that it did not seem like anyone was out to protect children back then and hopefully things are better now but I just don't know but it was made known that after all of this after everything after he had to register as an offender he still got a job at Disney working on the That's Sweet Life of Cody doing voiceover work and it's because he was a very connected man he had a lot of people that he knew in the industry and that is what is so scary about the industry is that people are so connected and they're willing to look the other way and believe one person because of money and power and know. things like that and it's just so disgusting especially when you hear about the fact that Drake talked about when they went to court he was on one side of the room with his mom and his brother and Brian had all these people big name people show up for him in the courthouse supporting him and Drake had to give a statement and he made a statement to those people calling them out for being there to support someone who hurt him and I just can't believe that people sat there and knew what he had done to Drake Bell and they were willing to just sit there it was also revealed that people that knew Brian also wrote letters to defend his character and a lot of these people weren't just family and friends they were big name stars you guys were uh. writing these letters to defend Brian and it's not known if they knew you know what exactly went on in this case at the time of them writing the letters and these might not be the same people that were in the courtroom that day so they might have not even known that Drake was involved in this but there were 41 people who wrote character letters for Brian and uh. some of these people they were victim blaming you guys they were saying that you know maybe he was tempted like what are you talking about a grown man was tempted by a child like <laughs> these things were just unbelievable that were written in these letters one of the bigger names that has been revealed to defend Brian at the time and write a letter was actor James Marsden who wrote that he's known Brian since he was a teenager Will Friedel and Ryder Strong from Boy Meets World also wrote letters but have since come out to say that they regret supporting him the doc also named Alan Thicke Taryn Killam Joanna Kearns Kimmy Robertson and Tom DeSanto as some who also wrote letters back then and something that is just so upsetting is that Taryn was also later in an episode of Drake and Josh and Drake and Josh was shot after all of this happened where they went to court and Brian was arrested so to know that Taryn wrote that letter and then they work together is just right. crazy I mean he might not have ever known that Drake was involved in that case and Drake 
probably never knew that he had written that letter because those letters were sealed until now, but just crazy to look back on that and realize. In a statement to People, Nickelodeon said, now that Drake Bell has disclosed his identity as the plaintiff in the 2004 case, we are dismayed and saddened to learn of the trauma he has endured and we commend and support the strength required to come forward. Other details about Brian were later revealed as all that cast member Kyle Sullivan revealed that in his home, Brian had a signed self-portrait painting of infamous serial killer John Wayne Gacy oh. and that the two of them had developed a pen pal relationship. He kept piles of letters and photos from John in his nightstand next to his bed. Truly so eerie that people like this were just walking around Nickelodeon, working with children. And he wasn't the only employee to be arrested at Nickelodeon for this type of behavior. Two other Nickelodeon employees at the time had also been arrested for things involving children. And as a result of all of this, people have really just been rethinking the content that they were watching on Nickelodeon as a child and really reflecting on the things being said here. And at the end of the series, there is a black screen that says that Nickelodeon told producers that the network in investigates all formal complaints as part of our commitment to fostering a safe and professional workplace. We have adopted numerous safeguards over the years to help ensure we are living up to our own high standards and the expectations of our audience. I think at this point, a lot of people are just side-eyeing the network as a whole though. Mm. But as a result of the series coming out, discussions have been had all over online with people calling on former Nickelodeon stars to use their platforms to speak out, which I will say this seems wrong. I mean, we cannot ask people to speak out not knowing what their experiences might have been. They might not feel comfortable or want to talk about something like this. It might be triggering. You just don't know. So that seems really inappropriate for people to be asking people oh. to speak out. We just don't know what's going on in other people's lives but something else inappropriate that has been called out though i will say is the cast of neds declassified who all have a podcast together were live the other day seemingly joking about the series and people found the whole thing to be in very poor taste Coming. daniel we told you never to speak about that get back in your hole daniel and give me your holes Sorry, we shouldn't joke about this. We really shouldn't. This is awful. Why are we doing this? Because this is about us. Listen, our set was not like that. Um, uh, and no, it's awful. The 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 Drake Bell is a like that's crazy to hear. I I that is. And that never came out, which is really wild. Drake Bell responded, quote tweeting this on Twitter, saying, "Ned's to classless. This is wild. Laugh it up, guys. Laugh it up." Give me your holes, really? And the cast has been receiving tons of backlash since this has gone around. I don't know why they thought to even say the things that they did in this, but they are definitely hearing it from the public, that's for sure. Everyone just seems to be super disgusted by what has come out from the series and wants to see the end of the network, or at least proof that they've made some sort of concrete change to the way that children stars are treated. I think the Kids' Choice Awards this year are going to be heavily protested, in mm -hmm. my opinion. But mm -hmm. as of right now, that is what has been said since the series has come out and what was revealed. Let me know if you guys watched it and your thoughts on it. I love you guys so much, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs> First of all, great video. Yeah. Um, whoever challenged this is, man. Uh, I mean, of course, it's a she. Yeah. You did an amazing job. Did an amazing job, honey. Second, dang, yo, Nas, Nas, the classified. Dang, I like that show, yo. Mm -hmm. So you got some, you got some cartoon, not cartoons, but you got some shows on Nickelodeon some that they, yeah. that they didn't go through anything. I, I, I would say yes. And then you got the other side that they went through hell. Right. You know what I'm saying? Probably the bigger stars went through hell, like iCarly and Drake and Josh and, you know, the stars that was bringing in the Amanda Bonds. Amanda Bonds, definitely her. Yeah. She had her own show. She did have her own show. All that. You know, the bigger stars, so. This, this oh, time. my gosh, man. Mm. Now I got to watch the documentary. Mm. You seen it on Netflix? I didn't see it on Netflix. I think it's on Investigation Discovery. It's on Netflix too. It's on Netflix too. Yeah. It's on Netflix. Um Y'all let us know in the comment section what y'all think about this. Um Absolutely, man. We said about what happened to the kids, man, and the parents, like Mookie said, they definitely gotta step up. Mm -hmm. But money be so intriguing the people that 
anything just to be happening to right. them, bro. And it's just it's it's the most horrible thing that you can do for your yeah. child, and they grow up all messed up, bro. Yeah, man. And it wasn't cool with Nat Nick, the classified dead, man, mm-hmm. laughing at Josh, man. Um, oh, Drake, Drake. It's, Drake. Yeah, Drake. Wasn't cool at all, bro. Man, anything you got to say before we get out of here, family? Uh, you know, it's just sad. I mean, like I said before, you got to love your children. Love your children. If you want them to be in the entertainment industry and things like that, that's cool. But protect your child at all costs, man. Facts. That's all I got. If y'all new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'm Nick Dawson. I'm Mookie Dawson. And we out, baby. One.